everybody welcome back to let's talk physical media my name is john faith will be with me in a little while for the q a portion of this week's show but we like to start this show off every single week with the news and this week we got shout and scream factory's may announcements we hinted at them last week it was leaked before last week's show that killer clowns from outer space was going to be coming to 4k blu-ray and we finally got our look at the final box art whether it be for the standard edition the 4k steelbook edition or the special edition scream factory store exclusives which are going for a really pretty penny right now you get some pins and a bunch of other stuff included which does seem a little bit overpriced but i opted to go with the steelbook because i just absolutely love that pink base of it and Killer Clowns from Outer Space is one of my favorite 1980s horror films. It's just a perfect tone of comedy and horror and just, you know, B-film special effects. I absolutely love that film and I can't wait to see it on 4K Blu-ray. But they also announced some other films such as Gretel and Hansel, which is a horror film that came out a few years ago, obviously, based on the Hansel and Gretel story. That's going to be getting a 4K Blu-ray release. I actually haven't seen that film. Faith actually went and saw that film. She said it was pretty good. I, I didn't see it myself. You know, it's something that maybe I'll check out one of these days, maybe when it comes to 4K Blu-ray. Also, the Addams Family 1 and 2, the, you know, the animated remakes that have come out in the last 10 years, those are going to be getting a 4K Blu-ray release and a double pack. That's pretty cool as well. Haven't seen those. As Actually, no, I did. I saw the first one when it came out, but I didn't see the second one. You know, they're more family friendly. Those are the kind of movies you introduce your child to when it comes to horror. You know, you show them the Addams Family animation. And then when they finally get a little bit older, then you bring them the 1990s Addams Family films, which I still think are the best ones. You're like some desperate howling demon. You frightened me. Do it again. And they still have stood the test of time. They are still really, really, really funny. I watched them last year. Angelica Houston, Raul Julia, they are just perfect. Christopher Lloyd, I mean, my God, they are both so, so, so funny. Even Adam's Family Values doesn't really get the appreciation it deserves. But you know what? We're going to be getting these animated films on 4K Blu-ray. So if you're a fan of them, that's what you'll be getting. You're also going to be getting Blu-ray releases for Dracula 2000, which wasn't directed by Wes Craven. I believe it was just produced by Wes Craven. The Island of Dr. Monroe and a new scan of... Of Orphan, which is actually a really, really, really good horror film, which actually got a Paramount Plus sequel a couple years ago. Haven't checked that one out, but I also, but I did hear it's pretty good. That was one of those sequels that I felt like just came too late, and I was like, what are they gonna do? Uh, but apparently it's pretty decent, so maybe I'll check that one out. But the original Orphan is really good, so we'll see how that new scan looks. So that's a pretty good lineup from Scream Factory. Obviously, Killer Clowns from Outer Space is the real standout for that. And we also got some other announcements celebrating 10 years. David O. Russell's American Hustle is gonna be coming to 4K blu-ray i actually used to have this on blu-ray this was a blind buy for me back when this film came out that's when i was really into the academy awards and really trying to build up my film knowledge when this movie came out i hadn't seen it, it was nominated for best picture so i actually bought it just on a blind buy and i thought it was all right but i never felt the need to go back to it and actually last year when i was cleansing the collection i dumped american hustle on blu-ray and i don't have it anymore and i don't really feel the need to run back so american hustle on 4k blu-ray is probably one i won't be going back to i still think david o russell's best film is silver linings playbook maybe one of these days that'll get a 4k blu-ray release and you know david o russell you hear all this stuff about him on set he's kind of a douchebag on set from what i've heard i've never met the guys so it's all really just speculation it's all just hearsay from how actors have worked with him i've heard that he made amy adams cry you don't make amy adams cry david o russell that's not right buddy you hear all that it kind of leaves a sour taste in your mouth but american hustle was pretty good i actually really like seeing jeremy renner in it and you also really get a nice great christian bale performance in there just showing that he wants to put his body through absolute hell i mean he makes himself very overweight in this film. Then he does that again for Vice. He'll make himself super skinny for The Machinist. I mean, the guy is just an animal when it comes to making his body look different. He really just throws himself into these roles. But if you like American Hustle, it's going to be getting a 4K Blu-ray release. And then another big announcement this week is we're going to be getting four more Disney Plus 4K steelbooks. And I believe Blu-ray steelbooks as well for four more Disney Plus shows. And or Obi-Wan Kenobi, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and Moon Knight. Now, out of all of these... Andor is the one that I will be most likely picking up because that show is going to look absolutely beautiful on 4K. You know, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, ah, it was all right. Same thing with Obi-Wan Kenobi. It really was like hit or miss. I really enjoyed some of those episodes, but some other episodes fell flat. And that's how I've kind of felt about most of the Disney Plus shows. That's honestly why I haven't really continued on watching Disney Plus shows is because I always just felt like they were very mixed. I still think that WandaVision was the best Disney Plus show when it comes to the MCU. And I still think that the first two seasons of The Mandalorian are the best that they have put out in the world of Star Wars shows. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. 
you know, the rest of them have been very mixed. And honestly, Andor is one of those shows that really will probably just grow and grow as time goes on. I think that's one that Disney Plus really threw their weight behind. And they and it really just shows in the effort of that one. So that's the one I will be probably picking up on 4K Steelbook out of all of them to review for you guys here on the channel. But the other three, you know, they are really nice. If you're a fan of those, the artwork on these Steelbooks is absolutely gorgeous. And if it's anything like the previous releases, we're going to be very lucky. And then in just the final bit of news, it's finally fully confirmed that The Departed is going to be coming to 4K Blu-ray. Warner Brothers even gave us a 4K Blu-ray trailer. And based on the trailer, it looks like it's going to be a really, really, really good transfer. So I'm looking forward to this one coming to 4K Steelbook, as well as a regular old-fashioned 4K slipcover. You know, I really do kind of miss those Warner Brothers 100 slipcovers we got last year. I thought those were really nice looking. You know, we're just back to the old-fashioned slipcovers this year. But it was really nice to see those 100-year anniversary slipcovers from last year. Kind of hurts me a little bit. And I think that the part would have actually been a really good one to release last year in honor of the 100th anniversary. I feel like that is one of the defining pictures over the last 25 years from Warner Brothers, especially since it won Martin Scorsese a Best Picture Award and a Best Director Academy Award, which he absolutely deserves. But that's it for this week's news. I'm going to kick it over to Faith and I for this week's Q&A portion of the show, and we got a lot of questions, so let's just dive right into it. All right, guys, on the way over here, I picked up Faith down the hall, dragged her down here. <laughs> and I brought her in for this week's Q&A portion of the show. You sure did. I did. But before we get into that, how was your week? It was good. Um, I read a, a a book called The Perfect Marriage. It was really good. I suggest if you like thriller, check that one out. But besides that, it was just working and that's the usual. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. Sounds good. Busy today. Oh, busy yeah. We today. had a busy day. We had to go food shop. You know, everything we do. All the house chores, food shopping. It's actually a pretty nice little Saturday. We're, uh, we're going to go to Home Depot. Stuff like that. Maybe Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't know. I don't know if we'll have enough time. You know, all that fun stuff that adults get to do on their days <laughs> off of work. But anyway, uh, our first question together, and this one is from at Tony the Lone Rider Smith. And he wrote, to John and Faith, what's each of your top five favorite movie soundtrack songs? For me, he has number one, Dream Warriors by Dokken from, from Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Number two, he has Bobby Brown, our own from Ghostbusters 2. Number three, Simple Minds, Don't You... Forget about me from the Breakfast Club. That is a that's a banger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number four, he's got Duran Duran, "A View to a Kill" from "A View to a Kill," James Bond film. That is actually a great song. I agree with you on that. And then, of course, at number five, Baran Banana Rama, "Cruel." Summer, cruel, ooh, cruel summer, Karate Kid. <laughs> That's a great one. Well, we both made separate lists. Okay. And yeah, let's start from our number fives and work our way up. Oh, I didn't know it had to be like. Ah, oh, it doesn't have to be okay. that way if you don't want it to be that way. Well, I didn't do it that way. I just put the best movies that I liked. Okay. All right. So the first one would be Frankie Valley, Grease. Grease is the word. Oh, that's by Frankie Val. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. That's the song from Grease. That's the one you pick, huh? Yeah. All right, that's fair enough. Um, for my number five, I got St. Elmo's Fire by John Parr. Have you ever heard that song? No. You've heard that song. We to build this man in motion. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a classic. Oh, you don't do it any justice. We have the so. same first name, so I don't know what you're talking about. Then I have <laughs> Don't Like the Guy, but R. Kelly, I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch. From Space Jam? Space Jam. Oh, yeah, that is a banger. Would you say <laughs> that's his best song, actually? No, no. not his best song. Like it. Okay. It's up there for me. All right, that's a fair choice. Uh, my number four is Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now from the uh, movie Mannequin. All right. We can build this bridge together. Nothing's gonna stop us now. Okay. Yeah, that's a classic, right? Um, then Seal, A Kiss from a Rose. Oh, Batman Forever. Yeah. You became the light on the dark. Side of me. Yeah. yeah, that is a great song. <laughs> that, is a, that Batman Forever soundtrack on its own, though, is fantastic. It had Smash It Up by The Offspring on there. Uh, U2's uh, 
something something kiss me fool me I, oh I, yeah yeah remember that that yeah. was a great song uh -huh. at the time yeah just kick-ass soundtrack and i mean it had it all and it was headlined by seal that's that's his best song so my next one at number three is a classic that everybody loves by the second yeah, the first best female singer of all time celine dion my heart will go on from titanic Oh, that's pretty good. Right? Yeah. Fun and fact. I have... Oh. Let's... Fun fact about the song, she only recorded that once. So the, the version you hear, because she didn't think that song was good, so the version that you hear was only recorded one time. That's crazy. Yeah, right? It's funny. Nailed it. That's how good she is. Um, then Color Me Bad. I want to sex you up. I want to sex you up. New Jack City. Up. Oh, New Jack City is great. Yeah. That's a fantastic movie. So that was your choice. Okay, then my number two is your number one, my friend, and that is Dream Warriors from, you know, by Dokken for Nightmare on Elm Street 3. That's a fantastic song and an awesome music video. Okay. And that's the second best You song know the song I always like. It's very recent. Is it from Barbie? No, very recent. It's from Spider Man. Oh. Into the Spider Verse. Oh, I know. Sunflower? Baby, I'm a wreck. Crash at my place, baby, you're a wreck. Needless to say, I'm keeping our By, uh, Sunflower. Post Malone and the guy who sings the yep. chorus. Yep. Yeah, no. Sw Swally. 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 That is a guy. Swally, actually. something like that. I actually love that song too. I mean, Into the Spider Verse was fantastic. Yeah, the sunflower. And then my number one is actually from a really bad movie, but I love this song so much. It's Nobody's Fool by Kenny Loggins. Oh. That's a good one. I, I'm telling it's the best it, one. I taste is a lot different. Kenny Loggins is the king of writing 80s theme songs so yeah but our taste is, is very different oh yeah yeah no, no we're we're all over the place when it comes to being a couple in music you know yeah, yeah but i think i have the better taste why don't you say no no you don't have candy loggins on your this list or john the word, Paul. It's the word, it's got mood, it's got that's, a, that's really your favorite song do, in greece do, do, do. yeah i thought it would be i've gotten chills that's a good it's, that's a good song but greece is just greece is the word right yeah okay all right, that was a great question, buddy. Thank you so I like much. That one. Yeah, that was a fun one. We had some fun with that one. Um, and then our next question is, and this is from Kevin Kruger. He says, you travel back in time to the year 2006 for 24 hours. What five things will you be sure to do that day? And fun fact, uh, 2006, I still consider that the best year of my life. I hadn't met Faith yet. Things were going. <laughs> 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 you're so mean <laughs> i love you no Mom. you're mean but it was a great year i gotta be honest with you and the reason is and if i travel back to 2006 um, i'm gonna pick up an xbox 360 <laughs> it, it came out in the end of you gotta be playing with matt yeah i'm gonna go me and matt were actually living together at the time we had three tvs set up we had each of our own gaming tvs and we had a tv in the middle that we would just play movies on uh and then we would play like that's the year gears of war came out need for speed carbon uh the elder scrolls oblivion i think fear came out that year so i'm definitely doing that 2006 what else was going on i mean i believe that was the year that also burger king ran the campaign with the xbox 360 games as well so i ate a lot of burger king that year and that was before i worked there and found out how the you know the sausage is made which is pretty bad what are you i doing? don't really have anything that i would do but i would invest Oh, well, in, yeah. In things that I know you, now. Like, well, 100%. If I can get into a time machine, that's what I'm doing. No, I'm I mean, investing. obviously, we're running a Back to the Future scam over here. <laughs> you know, we're bringing back a sports almanac. <laughs> and I'm going to be, I'm actually going to probably stop by Patrick Mahomes' house and, like, like take a look at him and see how he's going out there. Be like, oh, I'm telling you, I think that kid might be something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slip the dad a 20 and just move on. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I would do. Because, I, I mean, I was in college. It was a rough time, you know? Like, yeah. You know, yeah. you're right out of high school and stuff like that. So it was I tough. was a freshman in high school. That's why. I, was, I know, yeah. yeah I, freshman or sophomore? Either way, I was still, you know. Yeah, still, you were sophomore. Still young and, you know, still had the whole world ahead of me. And, uh, yeah, I miss it. 
But that was a great question, Kevin. Thank you so much, I buddy. I would definitely invest in like um, Amazon? Apple, Amazon, <laughs> all of that. I would definitely invest I'm going to get myself on the horn and explain it. What's the deal? <laughs> and the next question is from Rico Gomez. Hey, He's, Rico. Hey, Rico. And he said, whose talent, if you had right now, do you think you would make to good use of? And he says, Marlon Brando, acting. Paul McCartney, songwriting. Quentin Tarantino, directing. Frank Sinatra, singing. Oh, but oh, that's a you question. Uh, no. Because they're all men. Well, you don't think you can pull off the Brando look? <laughs> that's a you question. All right. Well, I'll answer it. I mean, if I, the best use of any of these, I would love to, like, be honestly, I would rather be an... Uh, I'd probably want to be a Quentin Tarantino. I would definitely want to be a director. You want to create the movie. I want to create the movie. I would love to act in the movie, but, you know, Quentin Tarantino casts himself in a lot of movies, and we've seen how that works out. So (laughs) if I'm going to direct, I want to direct, and I think that's what I would definitely make the best use of. Obviously, you just heard my voice, so I'm a pretty good singer. (laughs) I don't think I need Frank Sinatra's voice to carry a tune, but that was a great question, Rico, but I would definitely make good use of it. You wouldn't make any good use of that before we, uh, you know? If I had, it doesn't have to be that actor, but I would like to have a singing voice. Yeah, you're yeah. not a horrible singer. I'm a horrible singer. I can definitely train you, though, if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> and then our next question as a group is from at Sean Soda Pop, And he wrote, what is the stupidest comedy you've ever seen, but you love it? <laughs> and this is great for us because we love <laughs> stupid comedies. What's the stupidest comedy? I had one in mind. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it right now. Uh, don't be a menace in South Central <laughs> while drinking your juice in the hood. That is very stupid. Yes. That is very stupid. I mean, he gets a the job as a guys. crash test dummy. You think the other guys are stupid? The other guys are so <laughs> <Yeah>. stupid. <laughs> like, the idea that they thought they can fly off the building. Aim and for the bushes. Aim for the bushes. <laughs> like, that is how stupid that yeah. movie is. There wasn't even an awning in that direction. No, I know. Jump 20 stories. Doesn't make sense, does it? Like, it was stupid. Everybody in the movie is stupid. Most comedies are stupid. No, are you kidding? I mean, like, the Monty Python stuff is not stupid. There's a lot of highbrow comedy out there. No, there is. The problem is, is that com- you and I just like have stupid, stupid comedy. comedy. Yeah. yeah, we like, like that. Like, we're, we're like big Ace Ventura, Jim Carrey, the Waynes Brothers, we both love them. Well, all of them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Will Ferrell's a big one. Robin mm-hmm. Williams. Robin Williams. But Robin Williams isn't really... He's one who I would say is in the middle. Like, the birdcage, that's not a stupid no, comedy. No, but that's... We, we like him. Oh, I love... I mean, yeah. Robin Williams is one of the greatest of all time. Not many celebrities, when they die, actually genuinely make me sad. And I'll never oh, forget yeah. where I was when Robin me Williams too. died. That was like... Yeah, a me pun- too. That's like my childhood. I was childhood. working... I was a, as a server then. I was at a local supermarket working uh, King Cullen at the time. Yeah. I remember exactly where I was when I heard I couldn't believe it. I was like, you know, that, he made Jumanji. He was yeah. in Jumanji. You know, that, that kills. Unfortunately, as we get older, it happens, you know, but... Mm. All right. So, I know, we went down the path with that one. Got a little dark for a silly comedy <laughs> question, didn't it? Uh, do you have any other favorite stupid comedies that you love? You know what movie? Um, MacGruber. MacGruber like is one of the one. stupidest comedies ever. I'm going to shoot! Yeah, I, I love that one. <laughs> he has sex with a ghost in that movie. <laughs> the campaign? He, oh, the campaign is so dumb. <laughs> I love that movie. You're, oh, the, the, oh, the I shoes. know what you're going to do. Oh, it's because it's funny because he's already tall with his little high heels. <laughs> no, he's got high heels. Why is he high heels? <laughs> <laughs> what was his name? Martin Huggins or Marty Huggins? <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> We better bring you. I'm bringing my broom to Washington because <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> and a lot of people probably did not think that was funny, but me. No, and we loved it. Loved I got the Blu ray right over there because we rewatched we it. I have to watch that. I haven't seen the campaign in a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cam Brady. That might be my, my pick for tonight. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I got to watch. So we're going to actually tonight, we're starting also, where is it? The Ring Trilogy. We have to watch all oh, three of these movies. Gonna... So this review will be out tomorrow morning of the Ring 4K. So tonight I'm going to start with probably one and two, and then we'll watch three tomorrow, which is Rings, which I've actually considered a terrible movie. But maybe, you know what? Maybe two and three will grow on me on this time around. The one is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. So I'm looking forward to this. Beautiful box set, by the way. What do you think? I like it. It's yeah. pretty. The colors are nice. Yeah. And you like the ring, right? Mm-hmm. The first one. You don't remember the CGI deers. You're going to mm-hmm. enjoy them, though. Well, no, I'll be sleeping. Uh, okay. And from Kevin Kruger, he asks, what are some movies that you would love to see turned into a video game? 
That's a cool one. That is a uh, cool You know question. what? I um, Netflix just bought Avatar, so I would uh, an Avatar video game unless they I had. I feel like that. there probably was one based on the Nicktoon back in the day, but in your defense, I know what you're talking about because you love the new show and you're probably looking forward to seasons two and three, right? Mm-hmm. They got announced; they're going to mm-hmm. finish the story, yep. just like Cody Rhodes is going to finish his story at WrestleMania. <laughs> 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 so. But uh, for me, I was thinking, you ever seen, you've seen Edge of Tomorrow, right? Live, Die, Repeat. The Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt movie where oh. every, like, it's got the Groundhog Day effect. Like he keeps dying and then repeating the same day. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a great video game. Actually, they probably have video games like that out there. Kind of like have a, Happy Death Day. Exactly. Kind of well, based on, yeah, Happy Death, Greg, Groundhog Day. You know, just stuck in a time loop. And, oh, that's actually a good idea. Yeah, I, right? I think that would be a great one, Edge of Tomorrow. Um, Sicario is a great one, too, that you could probably turn into. A, a, you know, but there already are a ton of war. And, you know, I, I just don't know if there's anywhere you would actually play in like the CIA or the FBI. FBI. Yeah, it'd be cool. Um, you have any other ones? Like, do you have any? Like, because I know you like to play very different video games. Because Faith is still addicted to Monopoly on her phone somehow. So, <laughs> so what do you want? You want Clue? <laughs> they I probably already that. have Clue video games. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, a lot of the like movies I like, they have something similar to it. Yeah, you were the one and the only who uh, played the Mary Kate and Ashley uh, video game back in the day. Weren't I you? wasn't the only one. I was. I'm sure there's other little girls that played it. Well, Mary Kay and Ashley were pretty damn big. Yeah, they were really big. That's how they got their their all their money. Yeah, they don't have to work again, right? Yeah, they're very, very, very popular. Huh. <laughs> to Grandma's house we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a funny move, Grandma's boy. Grandma's boy, speaking of stupid comedy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, now I'm going to kick it over to just myself for the rest of this week's questions. And then me and Faith will be back to wrap it all up. So we'll see you in a little while, guys. All right. My first solo question this week is from Kevin Kruger. And he asks, what are your biggest hot takes about movies? So I've actually kind of spread these out. If you've been watching the channel long enough, you've kind of heard some of my hot takes. Probably the biggest one is that I'm not the hugest fan of Jaws. And, you know, some people kind of take that out of context because I really do appreciate Jaws. I just don't love Jaws. I don't really run back to Jaws. You know, I'll watch it every few years. I'll appreciate the filmmaking. I know it's one of Steven Spielberg's best. It's just not one of my favorite Steven Spielberg films. I could just appreciate the craftsmanship behind it, that John Williams score, but it's just not one of my favorite films. And speaking of a childhood favorite for a lot of people from 1984 is The Goonies. And that's another movie that I don't like almost at all. I really don't want to ever revisit that film. Richard Donner directed that one, and I usually love Richard Donner movies. I just believe that I came to that one too late. I should have saw it when I was a kid. I didn't see it until I was in my 20s, and that's probably why I don't love that movie as much as other people, but I am going to revisit it. I'm going to go against my word because me and David's show, where we like to revisit classic films, he's a big fan of the Goonies, as are most people, and he's going to force me to rewatch it, and we're going to revisit that film, so look for that sometime in April or May, and maybe this will finally be the time that I like it. I, I'm going to go against my word, and I'm going to revisit it, even though I'm not in the mood to rewatch it. I just do not like that movie. Um, I don't know what the love is for it, but you know what? Sometimes a movie just doesn't hit you the right way, so I just do not think that The Goonies is a great film, but you never know. Sometimes things change, and maybe this will finally be the time that The Goonies clicks with me. Another big hot take for me is, and this was a pretty recent one, is a few years ago, Mad Max, actually it's probably getting close to 10 years now, Mad Max Fury Road was a huge film. It even got nominated for Best Picture. I mean, people loved this movie when it came out, and to be honest with you guys, I didn't enjoy that movie at all. I was one of those people who kind of felt like it was one big chase scene, let's turn around and everything and just do it again. I didn't enjoy it at all. I enjoyed the visuals. This is another film where I really enjoyed the craftsmanship of the film, but I just did not appreciate the film as a whole when it comes to an enjoyable standpoint. This wasn't my type of action movie. I did really appreciate everything that they were doing in it, and like I said, the visuals were just absolutely stunning, and they did most of this practically, and it really does show on the screen, and I can really appreciate that, but it just didn't work for me. I just didn't think Mad Max Fury Road deserved that Best Picture nomination. It didn't click with me, and I tried, guys. I really, really did. I watched it actually two days in a row when I first bought the Blu-ray, and I was like, why does everybody love this movie? But that's just how film works. You know, sometimes a movie that's beloved doesn't click with you. You gotta be honest, though. Don't lie and say you love a movie just because everybody else loves it because you're afraid of the hate that you're gonna get. No, you know what? You gotta stick to your guns. If you don't like a movie, you don't like a movie. Unfortunately, though, we live in the world of social media where people get really angry if you don't like the same movies of them or you don't have the same opinion as them where you know what film is subjective if somebody came up to me right now and they said you know what my favorite film is john i'm a big fan of freddie got fingered i'd say i hey you know what i respect it i appreciate it i think freddie got fingered is absolutely
absolute garbage. But hey, if you love that movie, you love that movie. I will never take that away from you. And you know, you got we just got to respect each other's opinions. And unfortunately, one of my opinions is that I think that Mad Max Fury Road is not a great film, at least from a story standpoint. It just does not connect with me at all. But I can appreciate those visuals and I can appreciate the audio. And you know what? Maybe Furioso will surprise me. Based on that trailer, though, I don't think so. It looks like it's going to be another one that is not for me. And it's not like I don't like the Mad Max franchise. I do love the original Mad Max. I do love Road Warrior. And I even really enjoy Thunderdome. It has a great Tina Turner song attached to it. So how could you not like Thunderdome? We don't need another hero. Those are really the only hot takes where I would say that there's some beloved films out there that I don't really love, but other people absolutely adore. So that was a great question, Kevin. Thank you so much, buddy. And this one is from Lord Raiden, and he wrote, So as you know, my recommendations, while unique, are absolutely unmatched. See Guardians and Money Plane for details. Yes, I have reviewed Guardians and Money Plane here on the channel. You should watch both of those reviews. And, you know, both of those movies are a lot of fun, but... Nobody's going to say that those are amazing films. Guardians in its own way it is. Anyway, I got the Blood Rain 4K Steelbook because of course I did. But the question is, what you bowl movies have you seen? And which ones are your favorite for whatever reason? I've actually never seen a U-Ball film. Uh, basically what he does is he makes really crappy video game movies. So he's made the Far Cry film. He made Blood Rain. I think he made the Blood Rain sequel. He made the House of the Dead film. So he basically takes video game franchise and he makes a movie out of them. The problem is, is that most people who are fans of those video games absolutely hate him. Look at the Rotten Tomatoes scores for his films. They're all atrocious. He's actually considered one of the worst directors of all time. And he's always like fighting with his critics and everything like that even back in i believe 2006 he wanted to have a boxing match with one of his critics so he seems like a little bit of a hothead but if you ever look into it even more and this is something that i dived into and i'm not gonna recite it all here on the channel for you guys but basically he was running a big tax scam because if you guys know anything about the film industry and somebody actually broke this down fully on reddit you know they make films they might not do great financially at the box office but they get so many different tax write-offs that it is financially plausible for them to still make these films no matter what the quality is so it seems like this director is just making bad films for the tax write-off and we just see this all the time in the film industry it's been talked about a lot more recently with David Zasloff and Warner Brothers Discovery and how they just keep canceling films even though they're completed like Batgirl and right now big in the news is Acme versus Coyote and how that movie is completed even Will Forte came out this past week and said that the movie is incredible and that everyone should see it unfortunately it looks like Warner Brothers Discovery didn't put up much of an effort in trying to actually sell the film like they said they were to try and get ahead of the backlash because people do want to see this movie but they want that tax write-off so they're not going to release it and for some reason tax laws in the united states they give these breaks to these movie studios even though they spent all this money to make this film they somehow get a reward for not releasing it i don't know how this works it just feels like the government is always catering to the rich and you know corporations and Warner Bros. discovery they're a corporation so of course they get all the tax breaks while people like you and me we have to sit here and pay the taxes while they get paid to not release a film that they paid for. They get rewarded for spending the money and not giving anyone the product. How? I will never know, but you know what? That's why I'm not involved in the government, and that's why I don't make movies, because I don't understand the games. But apparently, this guy, Uball, he understands exactly what to do, and, well, I guess it's working for him. It just sounds like he's a little bit of a douchebag from what I'm reading about him, so, uh, you know, I still haven't seen any of his films, Lord Raiden, unfortunately. I'm gonna check them out because I, as much as I'm a very big highbrow film fan, I really do love a bad movie where it's so bad that it's good. I get so entertained by that stuff. I'm always very blown away, like, how they make these movies. Like, when you watch the movie Money Plane, when I was on vacation, I saw a short film called Splinter, which was Mark Bernardin's short film, his first short film. And a lot of it takes place on an airplane or in an airport terminal. And what I found out was in Los Angeles, there's a studio you go to and that's where they shoot all the plane scenes. And it's funny because I've seen Money Plane and then I watched this movie Splinter and it looked exactly the same as far as the interiors go. And it makes sense that they probably shot them in this studio, which has all these plane interiors, whether it be like a Boeing 737, 747. And it also has these terminal interiors. So that's pretty funny. And, uh, you know, when you watch these movies, you, you understand why they would probably film in these locations because it saves them money then it it's a lot easier to film in a studio than it is to you know film on location that's why making dune 2 which we've been talking about is such a big deal because that movie's scope you could only get that by shooting on location or else it would just look fake as hell but anyway that was a great question lord raiden thank you so much and thanks for tipping me off to that story because it is fascinating and if you guys like i would recommend checking out that story as well and the next question is from 021 om6 and this person sends in some of my favorite questions 
questions each and every single week, and they said, what's your top 10 TV shows of all time you'd love to see on 4K? And, you know, the thing is with TV is not everything is going to be able to actually come to 4K Blu-ray. That's why stuff is still stuck on DVD. When they were filming stuff back in, you know, in the 80s and 90s, they weren't filming it on film. So when you see stuff transferred to 4K Blu-ray, a lot of stuff is transferred from film, whether it be from 35 millimeter film, 16 millimeter film, 70 millimeter film, that stuff translate great to the 4K format. Now, when they used to shoot stuff like on VHS, that is not going to to look good on 4k blu-ray i don't know what kind of magic they have to do to bring certain shows to 4k blu-ray but a lot of tv shows will never end up on the format and if they do they pulled off some witchcraft to make it look as good as it possibly can because a lot of the stuff is just not going to translate well to the 4k format although i have seen them clean up some stuff really well and at the top of my list would be some of my favorite shows from the 1990s twin peaks and the x-files <laughs> Both of those actually have really nice Blu-ray releases. I have the Twin Peaks collection, which includes its original run from the 1990s and then its Showtime run from the 2010s. Both of those are great, great, great series. If you haven't seen them, Twin Peaks is one of my favorite shows ever. You know, it was a hot flame that burned out real quick. It also has a David Lynch film, Twin Peaks Firewalk With Me, which is almost as good as the TV show. It's just missing a lot of the humor, and that's kind of why Mark Frost, who also created the show with David Lynch, that's what he brought to the table was that kind of sense of humor and just making the whole world feel very weird, even though David Lynch makes things feel very weird. But he brings that nightmare aspect to it, and that's why Fire and Walk With Me just is very serious and very, very, very dark. The X-Files, one of my favorite shows ever. I would love to see that come to 4K Blu-ray as well. My favorite show ever is probably still The Wire or Breaking Bad. Both of those deserve 4K Blu-ray releases. The Wire actually received an HD upgrade a few years ago. You can watch that right now on Max, and it looks absolutely stunning. You can also pick up those Blu-rays. Whereas Breaking Bad has had Blu-ray releases. You can actually stream that show on 4K, but it doesn't have a 4K Blu-ray release. Another big HBO show is The Sopranos. That would be a great one on 4K Blu-ray as well. And speaking of other HBO shows, I would love True Detective Seasons 1 and Season 3 on 4K Blu-ray. I actually haven't started Season 4 yet, but I thought Season 1 was an absolute masterpiece. That really started the McConaissance. I believe that show actually came out the same year as Dallas Buyers Club, which actually won him his one and only Academy Award. We had Mud, Lincoln Lawyer, then we had Interstellar, and I mean, this is right in the center of the McConaissance, really just showing everybody, you know what, Matthew McConaughey should be appreciated as a great actor in True Detective Season 1. Haven't seen Season 4 yet, is still my favorite of them. Season 2 was, ah, it was alright. Missed opportunity. I really did like Season 3, though. Maharshal Ali has just proved why he's one of the greatest actors out there, so watch Season 3 if you haven't seen it as well. Batman the Animated series you know that got a blu-ray release i actually still have the dvds because i really like the box art for the dvds and if i want to watch the blu-rays i don't know how much of an upgrade it would be i'm really happy with my dvds but if it ever comes to 4k blu-ray they got my money and then i would also like the haunting of hill house on 4k blu-ray because this has a blu-ray release from netflix but it doesn't have a 4k blu-ray release which is you know it's a little bit tough because if you watch it on netflix it's in 4k on there and i just thought the audio design of this was absolutely stunning so i would love the audio to come to 4k blu-ray nice atmos track for the entire season oh can you imagine i might be just you know wishing a little bit too hard on that one but still i could just i would just love a haunting of hill house 4k blu-ray the rest of the shows you know i would take them if they ever release them but the original first one from mike flanagan one of the best working horror directors today that season of tv is some of the best tv you'll ever see i would love the haunting of hill house on 4k blu-ray and i'm also a big sitcom fan now these are the ones that probably will never end up on 4k blu-ray like i said network television 23 minute comedy series these will probably never end up on 4k blu-ray especially the first seasons of the one that i would absolutely love always sunny in philadelphia those didn't even come to high definition until i believe the fifth season of the show so everything before that was in standard definition they really shot it with crappy cameras which was part of the charm of the show actually it actually started in the last couple of seasons it's starting to look a little bit too good you're starting to notice all the blemishes on their faces and everything which is something that we really appreciate but part of the charm of always in sunny in philadelphia was you know they're always in this shitty dive bar they're a bunch of shitty people we never really cared about that but if it ever comes to 4k blu-ray i'll absolutely pick it up and that's the same thing with the show scrubs i would love that on 4k blu-ray that was a show from the 2000s i just ate up i've rewatched that show over and over and over again you know it's one of the most comfort shows you could just throw it on and really appreciate it it's bill lawrence who made ted lasso if you enjoyed the heartwarming nature of ted lasso go back and watch scrubs i promise you'll feel the exact same way about it so thank you so much buddy i really appreciate that question we don't get to talk too much tv on here so 
I had a good time with that one. Thank you. And this one is from our producer, Mr. Smelly Potato, and he said, What remakes do you like the most, and which remakes do you think are the worst? And which movie would you like to see get a remake? So, best and worst was actually pretty easy. I think the worst remakes are some remakes of some of my favorite films of all time, and in the 2000s and 2010s, they were just cranking out remakes of all of these classic films. Well, maybe not classic to other people, but to me, you know, we got the Total Recall remake, absolute garbage, even though I love Colin Farrell. You just lost that Paul Verhoeven charm. Then you had the RoboCop remake from 2014, and I love Michael Keaton, and I love Samuel Jackson, but you remade another Paul Verhoeven film, and RoboCop is in my top 10 films of all time. It only came out in 1987. Leave it alone. We already got two sequels that, in my opinion, are not great. Although, you know, two's all right, but three's awful. Three actually might still be, you know, we have a video coming out with me and David, a.k.a. Shamrock Balls, where we actually break down RoboCop. And both of us said, you know, RoboCop 2, not a bad movie, but RoboCop 3 is, is the biggest atrocity of the franchise. But the RoboCop remake, it's just unnecessary. We didn't need it. And that's the same thing with 2015's Poltergeist, another film in my top 10 of all time. They felt like they had to remake that one, the Toby Hooper classic from the 1982 that was produced and maybe directed by Steven Spielberg. There was just no reason to remake those films. Those are the ones I actually find. You know, I'm not offended by a remake. I'll always have the originals. I don't really care if they remake them or not, but it just feels like a cheap cash grab that you're, you know, the originals are so good. We should be steering people back to those films and not remaking them for a modern audience, especially when they're not that old. I mean, 1982 is the oldest of these films and it's not that long ago. I guess it's, I guess it is kind of getting a little bit long ago now. Man, I'm getting old. All right. That's a little bit depressing. But what films do I absolutely love that are remakes? Well, believe it or not, Scarface is a remake. And and the Brian De Palma one is an absolute stone cold classic. A lot of people love Scarface, you know, especially in the rap game in the 90s and 2000s. I mean, Scarface was everywhere. It's definitely one of Al Pacino's most iconic roles right up there with Michael Corleone. I would have to say Tony Montana, Michael Corleone, that's Al Pacino's two most iconic roles and, you know, it's such it's a remake of a 1930s film and I've seen it actually back in the day the DVD used to come with the original one. You got the DVD for the remake and you got the DVD for Brian De Palma's Scarface. Which is pretty cool. I don't think they do that anymore, especially since I have the gold edition of Scarface and it definitely doesn't include the original. Unless I'm wrong. I'm not too sure. And then another big remake is Ocean's Eleven, which is a remake of a 1960s film featuring the Rat Pack. And that movie just felt like a big hangout kind of movie. And then Ocean's Eleven, directed by Steven Soderbergh, this became a really great heist film, if not one of the best heist films of all time. Well edited. That's one thing about Steven Soderbergh. His films are always so, so, so well edited. And we didn't talk about it in the news portion of the show, but the Ocean's trilogy is going to be coming to 4k blu-ray on april 30th we talked about that a few times we've seen the artwork for the steel books but we also saw that this week they announced a triple pack which is going for 60 bucks here in the united states it's going to be coming you know standard packaging and that's actually the one that i pre-ordered but anyway oceans 11 a remake a classic film nowadays still the best in that trilogy and then the last remake is the martin scorsese directed 1991 film cape fear now the original cape fear from the 1960s starring robert mitchum is fantastic but the one starring Robert De Niro just takes it to a whole new level. Also, it's paying homage to Hitchcock films. And originally, Martin Scorsese wasn't going to direct this film. He was actually going to direct Schindler's List, and Steven Spielberg was going to direct Cape Fear because Steven Spielberg felt like Martin Scorsese would do a better job. But then he felt like it would probably be important for Steven Spielberg, who was a Jewish man, to be the one who directed Schindler's List. And originally, he was going to direct it back in the 1980s when he first received the book, but, you know, he really had to work himself up to it. And then they finally decided, okay, we'll swap scripts you go direct Cape Fear Martin Scorsese and I'm gonna go direct Schindler's List and I think it all worked out perfectly because Cape Fear is actually one of those great Martin Scorsese films much like Shutter Island that a lot of people forget that he made you know he dabbles in a bunch of different genres loves to pay homages to some of his favorite directors and Cape Fear is a huge homage to Alfred Hitchcock so those are my favorite remakes now what movies do I want to see get remade well this is actually really hard for me because I'm not a huge supporter of remakes unless it's a bad film that they want to take a really cool concept or, or maybe like a superhero film that was really bad and they you know, remake it. So the only one I could really come up with was 
Batman versus Superman. I felt like there was a great storyline in there, and the movie just left me very, very, very disappointed. One of the most disappointed times I ever left the movie theater was seeing Batman versus Superman. As a lot of you guys know, I have Batman right behind me. That's the Batman from Batman versus Superman. That's Ben Affleck's Batman. That's Batfleck, or whatever the hell they were calling him. And I like Ben Affleck as Batman. I really did. I thought he did a good job in the Jack, in the Zack Snyder universe, but Batman versus Superman just left me feeling so upset and disappointed, and I just can't believe we're doing this Martha shit. I mean, I was just, I was really disappointed by that movie. I haven't seen the director's cut, to be fair, though, which I heard is way better, which makes sense, because I have seen the Justice League director's cut, the four-hour cut, and that is way better than the Josh Whedon cut, so maybe I owe that one a shot, but I really do think that eventually down the line, a great Batman versus Superman film is in there. You get the right director, and I like Zack Snyder, but you know, it just didn't click the first time around, but again, I haven't seen the director's cut, to be fair, so I do owe it that, and maybe one day I will appreciate it, but as of right now, if I could remake any film in the entire world, it would be Batman vs. Superman. So that was a great question, Mr. Smelly Potato. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Then the next Kevin Kruger question is, how would you rank the 2024 Best Picture nominees? So, this week is the Academy Awards this upcoming Sunday. Actually, it's tonight. If you guys are watching this on Sunday, the Academy Awards are tonight. So... I actually haven't seen all 10 of the Best Picture nominees, and the two I haven't seen are still Zone of Interest and Anatomy of a Fall. I was going to watch Anatomy of a Fall last night. Well, I'm, I'm recording this on a Friday. I was going to watch it last night when I got home to do this video. But uh, me and Frank from Frank's Medium Reviews, we had a video to shoot, and I felt like, all right, you know what? I'll get around to Anatomy of a Fall at some point. But at the time of this recording, haven't seen it yet. I'm really looking forward to seeing Jonathan Glazer's Zone of Interest. I've rewatched all of Jonathan Glazer's films in anticipation of Zone of Interest, but it was was never playing at a time when I could see it around me, and it was never really even playing in a theater around me, and that was the same thing with Anatomy of a Fall. You know, I live on Long Island, which is not far from New York City, but New York City just gets all the movies, they get them early, we're here on Long Island, it just trickles down, and you know, sometimes the smaller pictures just don't stay in theaters very long, and you know, Academy Award nominated films, they don't always do the best at the box office, but I'm gonna rank the eight that I have seen from worst to first, like I like to do. So at number eight, I got Poor Things, and I really, really liked Poor Things, and I appreciate the production design of it. I really love the score. I love Emma Stone. I love Willem Dafoe. Emma Stone is actually my favorite actress of all time. So whatever she's in, I don't really care. I'm going to go see it, even if I don't love the film. And this is a film that I didn't love entirely. I really enjoyed Poor Things. I really enjoyed the meaning of the film and what they're trying to get at. I thought it had a great message in there. You know, the only thing is, is like, as good as sex scenes can be in film, sometimes you can go overboard, and I felt like this movie, yeah, probably could have cut three or four sex scenes from it, and I probably would have enjoyed it a little bit more, because I really enjoyed the plot, I really enjoyed the story, I really enjoyed that steampunk production design, I really enjoyed the costumes, but it just didn't entirely click for me. And then at number seven, we got American Fiction. This is another one that I really love the concept, even though it kind of is a very similar, like a cousin to a Spike Lee film called Bimboozled, a very similar concept, but this one stars Jeffrey right Sterling K Brown got a lot of acclaim for his role in this and he is the best in this film out of everybody even though Jeffrey Wright I love Jeffrey Wright and I'm glad to see him finally getting a leading role and really getting to sink his teeth into a role and he's great in this movie as well the thing is as far as the story goes it's very very good but there's an aspect of this movie a character dies early in this film I'm not gonna spoil anything for you guys but it felt like that was gonna be a major plot point in this film and it's a major plot point for a short amount of time and then it kind of gets ignored for the rest of the film and then the ending just just doesn't land entirely for me. It felt like it was too clever for its own good, and I felt like I would have liked a little bit more of a contemporary ending than the one that they went for. It felt like they kind of cheaped us out because they didn't know how to close the film, so they closed it that way. And if you've seen the film, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then at number six is The Holdovers. Now, I'm a huge Paul Giamatti fan. I love this film. It does feel like it's going to become a Christmas classic. Definitely one of Alexander Payne's best films. I still think that his best film is probably Sideways or Election, but either way, he's made some classic films. Films. And this is one that's probably going to grow and grow on me as time goes on, but I've only seen it one time. But this is one I can imagine watching every single Christmas and enjoying it because it's an extremely heartwarming story. Paul Giamatti is so good in it. Divine Joy and Randolph is pretty much a shoe in to win Best Supporting Actress at the Academy Awards, and she absolutely deserves it. She gives a great performance in this. You know, obviously, what happens to her character in this film, you know, it'll break your heart, just like everything that happens to these characters in this film breaks your heart. But you know what? It sends us all home happy, and that's really all that.
that matters. If you haven't seen The Holdovers, you can actually watch it on Peacock right now, but it is going to be getting a 4K Blu-ray release later in the year. And then at number five is Barbie. I think that 2023 will be most remembered for Barbenheimer. On July 21st, we got Barbie and Oppenheimer on the same day. We also got They Clone Tyrone on Netflix. No one talks about that, but what a day July 21st, 2023 was. What a day. We got three great films, but Barbie is a fantastic film starring Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling, directed by Greta Gerwig. It is a great, great comedy film. The message is fantastic. The production design, speaking of production design, I mean, the way they created the Barbie world with that pink, it's just incredible. Great, great filmmaking. You know, there was a lot of controversy because Greta Gerwig didn't get nominated for Best Director. The film got nominated for Best Picture, you know? I think she'll be okay, and I love Greta Gerwig. I really do. I think she's three for three when it comes to the films that she's directed. I mean, she's one of our best working directors today. If anybody else but Greta Gerwig directed Barbie, we would have not ended up with a film this good we probably would have felt more like a cash grab whereas this actually feels like a special film and then at number four i got past lives Past Lives is just working all the way up to one of the best endings in film history because I did not expect the ending to this movie to hit me as much as it did. Everything in this film leading up to it, what, when we see these two characters at all different points in their lives and how they keep finding each other and then when we get the ending that we get, I mean, that's why I put this movie so high and it's one you have to absolutely see if you haven't. And then at number three, we have Maestro. And a lot of people have been shitting on Bradley Cooper for how he's kind of been acting, making his rounds, really trying to sell himself for the Academy Award a lot of people have said it seems a little bit desperate but he just seems very passionate to me I love seeing Bradley Cooper do this and I really loved Maestro I don't know why so many people don't like the movie I thought it was great it tells the story of Leonard Bernstein I love the changing from black to white to color how they were able to capture the costumes again great makeup great prosthetics even has a great moment with Snoopy which I'm not going to spoil for you guys as well I think Maestro is just really really underrated I don't know why people didn't love this movie as much as I did but it really worked for me and I would put that at number three and then at number two we have Kill Killers of the Flower Moon, directed by Martin Scorsese, and this movie is fantastic. You can watch it right now on Apple TV+. Plus. It should be getting a 4K Blu-ray release sometime this year if you haven't seen it, but when you saw it on the big screen, I mean, this is another one of those Martin Scorsese classics. You got a stat cast in there with Leonardo DiCaprio, and then Lily Gladstone. I think she's going to win Best Actress at the Academy Awards. She probably deserves it. I mean, if I was going to put my money behind somebody, I would put it behind Emma Stone, but she's already got the Academy Awards, so Lily Gladstone hasn't won one yet, and you know what? Let's spread the love out. Lily Gladstone deserves it. She does a lot of great acting in this movie, and a lot of it is done through her face. Great facial acting. So she definitely would deserve it, and I would put Killers of the Flower Moon at number two. Yeah, so Oppenheimer then would be my number one, and also it's my favorite pick of 2023 anyway when it comes to film, and it's one of those special films. So, of course, Oppenheimer is definitely going to sweep the Academy Awards this year. It is going to be, it is going to win Best Picture. Robert Downey Jr. is going to win Best Supporting Actor. Killian Murphy is going to win Best Actor. Christopher Nolan is going to win Best Director, and it's just going to be a celebration of Oppenheimer, the best film of 2023, and it definitely deserves that Academy Award, and that's why I picked that for number one myself. Anyway, uh, circling back, I know you guys are probably a little bit confused. <laughs> The camera actually went out. <laughs> I lost video. I still had audio, so I had to finish recording it, you know, when me and Faith were filming. So that's why uh, it might seem a little bit jarring. You have to look at Faith's pretty face for another second, so that's always a good thing. <laughs> Most of the time. But anyway, guys. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Eh, don't worry about it. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that's going to do it here for us on another episode of Let's Talk Physical Media. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you get, and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on, share this video, or you can even become a channel member like our channel producers, John Doe Juggalo, Jason Martin, and Fate's favorite name in the world, Mr. <laughs> Smelly Potato. <laughs> and then you could also become a channel director if you'd like, like Frank's Media and Reviews. That's Frank Rodriguez, who you guys saw do a video with me this past what day did that come out, Faith Thursday? This past Thursday, <laughs> and that's going to be a continued collaboration between the two of us. So head over to his channel and subscribe there as well. And if you got no money to throw our way, guys, don't worry about it. We don't mind at all. We just really appreciate you checking out the video. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to get out in those streets and tell your friends about us. And then we'll be seeing you around. <laughs>